here at the northwestern extremity of Papua New Guinea, there's very little to show that this is, in fact, the West Syrian border. But this is where Papua New Guinea stops. Over there is where Indonesia begins. The nearest town of any size is Wanamo, about 45 kilometres behind me, and not much further away in that direction, the big coastal city of Jayapura. But clustered on the border around the Wutung patrol post, there are small villages. The inhabitants among an estimated 18,000 Papua New Guineans who live within the border buffer zone across the country. In the Wutung area at least, the last few years have seen a major break in the traditional lifestyle of these people. Trade which once flourished between villages across the border is now at a standstill. Visits between the many relatives across the border, once commonplace on festive occasions, have slowed to a trickle. The Wutongs have traditional land rights stretching 12 to 15 kilometres across the border, but they're no longer allowed to use the land. And people here told me that cross-border visiting had died away because the villagers were frightened. Not of the West Irianese, but of the Indonesian armed forces. This followed the close interrogation of one man and his wife, whose identity papers the Indonesians suspected. At an official level, both governments have been attempting to sort out the border difficulties with regular border committee meetings. It's a particularly sensitive issue in Papua New Guinea, a new nation of little more than two and a half million people, rubbing shoulders with a giant that has a population of 130 millions and that's recently made one territorial grab in close proximity. The member for this border region is Mr. Paul Lungro, Deputy Opposition Leader in the National Parliament. Naturally, they are very, very frightened because in the past, uh, the Indonesian um, soldiers uh, have been uh, crossing the border, chasing the West Indian refugees and so forth. And not only that, but um, um, the border villages uh, have uh, so much of their land in the other side, in the Indonesian territory. Story. Um, um, before the Indonesian have taken over um, um, West Irian, uh, during Dutch administration, uh, people there were given that freedom of uh, staying on their land, uh, do their gardening, and uh, all sorts of uh, uh, going out to all sorts of games. Um, but now that uh, because of uh, Indonesian militarist, uh, their freedoms, their rights have been so restricted. And so now uh, you can come to a conclusion that they are not only frightened, but they also are very, very cross. And at the same time, they are urging their political leaders to do something about it. Um, they do think that one time or uh, another, um, Indonesia will be trying to extend its um, imperialist this way to Papua New Guinea. And if that is going to happen, they will the, be the first one to suffer. Officially, this is called a quarantine station. It's about halfway between the border and Wanamo to the east. It's been built to house refugees coming across the border from West Irian. The only houses nearby are for police, two men stationed here permanently. The last refugees were here about one month ago, four men who'd come across the border by canoe. Three of them stayed here for 14 days in tight security behind this cyclone and barbed wire fence then took their canoe back towards Jayapura. The other man stayed here for one month before going on to Wanamo. He's still in Papua New Guinea. Several big parties of refugees have been through here. One party that crossed the border more than a year ago was so large the compound couldn't hold them all. There were more than 100 men, women and children, and they camped outside. Now they're in various parts of Papua New Guinea, many of them in Port Moresby. Such crossings could be a potential friction source. The army of Papua New Guinea is a tiny affair, just two battalions. Evidence in itself that the national government is confident of the good intentions of Indonesia. At this base near the border at Wanamo, there's generally one company of the Pacific Islands Regiment, and at any time at least one platoon may be deep in the jungle on border patrols that can last a month or more. These men were support troops left behind at base to back up those on border patrol and others on civil aid projects. Despite the real fears held by some people, the Prime Minister, Mr. Samari, is convinced that they're groundless. He told me, there's a very good understanding between the Indonesian government and our own. 
And he added, we're doing everything possible to let our people know that they have nothing to worry about. Gary Scully reporting from the border of West Irian and Papua New Guinea for ABC National News.